A tsunami from Japanese Jin harbor wave. English pronunciation, tsunami or, or tidal wave, also known as a seismic sea wave, is a series of waves in a water body caused by the displacement of a large volume of water, generally in an ocean or a large lake. Earthquakes, volcanic eruptions and other underwater explosions including detonations, landslides, glacier calvings, meteorite impacts and other disturbances above or below water all have the potential to generate a tsunami. Unlike normal ocean waves, which are generated by wind, or tides, which are generated by the gravitational pull of the Moon and the Sun, a tsunami is generated by the displacement of water. Tsunami waves do not resemble normal undersea currents or sea waves because their wavelength is far longer. Rather than appearing as a breaking wave, a tsunami may instead initially resemble a rapidly rising tide. For this reason, it is often referred to as a «tidal wave», although this usage is not favored by the scientific community because it might give the false impression of a causal relationship between tides and tsunamis. Tsunamis generally consist of a series of waves, with periods ranging from minutes to hours, arriving in a so-called internal wave train. Wave heights of tens of meters can be generated by large events. Although the impact of tsunamis is limited to coastal areas, their destructive power can be enormous, and they can affect entire ocean basins. The 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami was among the deadliest natural disasters in human history, with at least 230,000 people killed or missing in 14 countries bordering the Indian Ocean. The ancient Greek historian Thucydides suggested in his 5th century BC history of the Peloponnesian War that tsunamis were related to submarine earthquakes, but the understanding of tsunamis remained slim until the 20th century and much remains unknown. Major areas of current research include determining why some large earthquakes do not generate tsunamis while other smaller ones do, accurately forecasting the passage of tsunamis across the oceans, and forecasting how tsunami waves interact with shorelines. <laughs> Topic. Terminology. Topic. Tsunami The term, tsunami, is a borrowing from the Japanese tsunami jinbo, meaning, harbor wave. For the plural, one can either follow ordinary English practice and add an s, or use an invariable plural as in the Japanese. Some English speakers alter the word's initial, t-s, to an, s, by dropping the, t. Since English does not natively permit, t-s, at the beginning of words, though the original Japanese pronunciation is, t-s. <laughs> Topic. Tidal wave Tsunamis are sometimes referred to as tidal waves. This once popular term derives from the most common appearance of a tsunami, which is that of an extraordinarily high tidal bore. Tsunamis and tides both produce waves of water that move inland, but in the case of a tsunami, the inland movement of water may be much greater, giving the impression of an incredibly high and forceful tide. In recent years, the term, tidal wave, has fallen out of favor, especially in the scientific community, because the causes of tsunamis have nothing to do with those of tides, which are produced by the gravitational pull of the moon and sun rather than the displacement of water. Although the meanings of, tidal, include, 
resembling or having the form or character of the tides. Use of the term tidal wave is discouraged by geologists and oceanographers. A 1969 episode of the TV crime show Hawaii 5 0 entitled, 40 Feet High and It Kills, used the terms, tsunami and tidal wave interchangeably. Seismic sea wave The term seismic sea wave also is used to refer to the phenomenon, because the waves most often are generated by seismic activity such as earthquakes. Prior to the rise of the use of the term tsunami in English, scientists generally encouraged the use of the term seismic sea wave rather than tidal wave. However, like tsunami, seismic sea wave is not a completely accurate term, as forces other than earthquakes, including underwater landslides, volcanic eruptions, underwater explosions, land or ice slumping into the ocean, meteorite impacts, and the weather when the atmospheric pressure changes very rapidly, can generate such waves by displacing water. Topic. History While Japan may have the longest recorded history of tsunamis, the sheer destruction caused by the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami event mark it as the most devastating of its kind in modern times, killing around 230,000 people. The Sumatran region is also accustomed to tsunamis, with earthquakes of varying magnitudes regularly occurring off the coast of the island. Tsunamis are an often underestimated hazard in the Mediterranean Sea and parts of Europe. Of historical and current with regard to risk assumptions importance are the 1755 Lisbon earthquake and tsunami which was caused by the Azores-Gibraltar transform fault, the 1783 Calabrian earthquakes, each causing several tens of thousands of deaths and the 1908 Messina earthquake and tsunami. The tsunami claimed more than 123,000 lives in Sicily and Calabria and is among the most deadly natural disasters in modern Europe. The Storiga slide in the Norwegian Sea and some examples of tsunamis affecting the British Isles refer to landslide and meteo tsunamis predominantly and less to earthquake-induced waves. As early as 426 BC the Greek historian Thucydides inquired in his book History of the Peloponnesian War about the causes of tsunami, and was the first to argue that ocean earthquakes must be the cause. The cause, in my opinion, of this phenomenon must be sought in the earthquake. At the point where its shock has been the most violent the sea is driven back, and suddenly recoiling with redoubled force, causes the inundation. Without an earthquake I do not see how such an accident could happen. The Roman historian Ammianus Marcellinus race geste described the typical sequence of a tsunami, including an incipient earthquake, the sudden retreat of the sea and a following gigantic wave, after the 365 AD tsunami devastated Alexandria. Topic. Causes The principal generation mechanism or cause of a tsunami is the displacement of a substantial volume of water or perturbation of the sea. This displacement of water is usually attributed to either earthquakes, landslides, volcanic eruptions, glacier calvings or more rarely by meteorites and nuclear tests. The waves formed in this way are then sustained by gravity. Topic: 
Topic: Seismicity. Tsunami can be generated when the sea floor abruptly deforms and vertically displaces the overlying water. Tectonic earthquakes are a particular kind of earthquake that are associated with the Earth's crustal deformation. When these earthquakes occur beneath the sea, the water above the deformed area is displaced from its equilibrium position. More specifically, a tsunami can be generated when thrust faults associated with convergent or destructive plate boundaries move abruptly, resulting in water displacement, owing to the vertical component of movement involved. Movement on normal extensional faults can also cause displacement of the seabed, but only the largest of such events typically related to flexure in the outer trench swell cause enough displacement to give rise to a significant tsunami, such as the 1977 Sumba and 1933 Sanriku events. Tsunamis have a small amplitude wave height offshore, and a very long wavelength often hundreds of kilometers long, whereas normal ocean waves have a wavelength of only 30 or 40 meters, which is why they generally pass unnoticed at sea, forming only a slight swell usually about 300 mm above the normal sea surface. They grow in height when they reach shallower water, in a wave shoaling process described below. A tsunami can occur in any tidal state and even at low tide can still inundate coastal areas. On April 1, 1946, the 8.6 MW Aleutian Islands earthquake occurred with a maximum Mercalli intensity of V strong. It generated a tsunami which inundated Hilo on the island of Hawaii with a 14-meter high feet surge. Between 165 and 173 were killed. The area where the earthquake occurred is where the Pacific Ocean floor is subducting or being pushed downwards under Alaska. Examples of tsunami originating at locations away from convergent boundaries include Storega about 8,000 years ago, Grand Banks 1929, Papua New Guinea 1998 Tapin, 2001. The Grand Banks and Papua New Guinea tsunamis came from earthquakes which destabilized sediments, causing them to flow into the ocean and generate a tsunami. They dissipated before traveling transoceanic distances. The cause of the Storega sediment failure is unknown. Possibilities include an overloading of the sediments, an earthquake or a release of gas hydrates methane etc. The 1960 Valdivia earthquake MW 9.5, 1964 Alaska earthquake MW 9.2, 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake MW 9.2, and 2011 Tohoku earthquake MW 9.0 are recent examples of powerful megathrust earthquakes that generated tsunamis known as teletsunamis that can cross entire higher oceans. Smaller MW earthquakes in Japan can trigger tsunamis called local and regional tsunamis that can devastate stretches of coastline, but can do so in only a few minutes at a time. <laughs> Landslides In the 1950s, it was discovered that larger tsunamis than had previously been believed possible could be caused by giant submarine landslides. These rapidly displace large water volumes, as energy transfers to the water at a rate faster than the water can absorb. 
Their existence was confirmed in 1958, when a giant landslide in Latuya Bay, Alaska, caused the highest wave ever recorded, which had a height of 524 meters over 1,700 feet. The wave did not travel far, as it struck land almost immediately. Two people fishing in the bay were killed, but another boat managed to ride the wave. Another landslide tsunami event occurred in 1963 when a massive landslide from Monte Toc entered the Viant Dam in Italy. The resulting wave surged over the 262 meters (860 feet) high dam by 250 meters (820 feet) and destroyed several towns. Around 2000 people died. Scientists named these waves megatsunamis. Some geologists claim that large landslides from volcanic islands, e.g. Cumbre Vieja on La Palma in the Canary Islands, may be able to generate megatsunamis that can cross oceans, but this is disputed by many others. In general, landslides generate displacements mainly in the shallower parts of the coastline, and there is conjecture about the nature of large landslides that enter the water. This has been shown to subsequently affect water in enclosed bays and lakes, but a landslide large enough to cause a transoceanic tsunami has not occurred within recorded history. Susceptible locations are believed to be the Big Island of Hawaii, Fogo in the Cape Verde Islands, La Réunion in the Indian Ocean, and Cumbre Vieja on the island of La Palma in the Canary Islands, along with other volcanic ocean islands. This is because large masses of relatively unconsolidated volcanic material occurs on the flanks and in some cases detachment planes are believed to be developing. However, there is growing controversy about how dangerous these slopes actually are. Topic: <laughs> Meteorological Some meteorological conditions, especially rapid changes in barometric pressure, as seen with the passing of a front, can displace bodies of water enough to cause trains of waves with wavelengths comparable to seismic tsunamis, but usually with lower energies. These are essentially dynamically equivalent to seismic tsunamis, the only differences being that meteo tsunamis lack the transoceanic reach of significant seismic tsunamis and that the force that displaces the water is sustained over some length of time such that meteo tsunamis can't be modeled as having been caused instantaneously. In spite of their lower energies, on shorelines where they can be amplified by resonance, they are sometimes powerful enough to cause localized damage and potential for loss of life. They have been documented in many places, including the Great Lakes, the Aegean Sea, the English Channel, and the Balearic Islands, where they are common enough to have a local name, Risaga. In Sicily they are called Marubio and in Nagasaki Bay, they are called Abiki. Some examples of destructive meteo tsunamis include the 31st of March 1979 at Nagasaki and the 15th of June 2006 at Menorca, the latter causing damage in the tens of millions of euros. Meteo tsunamis should not be confused with storm surges, which are local increases in sea level associated with the low barometric pressure of passing tropical cyclones, nor should they they be confused with setup, the temporary local raising of sea level caused by strong onshore winds. Storm surges and setup are also dangerous causes of coastal flooding in severe weather, but their dynamics are completely unrelated to tsunami waves. They are unable to propagate beyond their sources, as waves do. Man-made or triggered tsunamis 
There have been studies of the potential of the induction of and at least one actual attempt to create tsunami waves as a tectonic weapon. In World War II, the New Zealand military forces initiated Project SEAL, which attempted to create small tsunamis with explosives in the area of today's Shakespeare Regional Park. The attempt failed. There has been considerable speculation on the possibility of using nuclear weapons to cause tsunamis near an enemy coastline. Even during World War II consideration of the idea using conventional explosives was explored. Nuclear testing in the Pacific Proving Ground by the United States seemed to generate poor results. Operation Crossroads fired two 20 kilotons of TNT 84 terajoules bombs, one in the air and one underwater, above and below the shallow 50 meters 160 feet waters of the Bikini Atoll Lagoon. Fired about 6 kilometers 3.7 miles from the nearest island, the waves there were no higher than 3 to 4 meters 9.8 to 13.1 feet upon reaching the shoreline. Other underwater tests, mainly Hardtack I, Wahoo, deep water, and Hardtack I, Umbrella, shallow water, confirmed the results. Analysis of the effects of shallow and deep underwater explosions indicate that the energy of the explosions doesn't easily generate the kind of deep, all ocean waveforms which are tsunamis. Most of the energy creates steam, causes vertical fountains above the water, and creates compressional waveforms. Tsunamis are hallmarked by permanent large vertical displacements of very large volumes of water which do not occur in explosions. Topic: Characteristics. Tsunamis cause damage by two mechanisms, the smashing force of a wall of water traveling at high speed, and the destructive power of a large volume of water draining off the land and carrying a large amount of debris with it, even with waves that do not appear to be large. While everyday wind waves have a wavelength from crest to crest of about 100 meters (330 feet) and a height of roughly 2 meters (6.6 feet), a tsunami in the deep ocean has a much larger wavelength of up to 200 kilometers (120 miles). Such a wave travels at well over 800 kilometers per hour, 500 miles per hour, but owing to the enormous wavelength, the wave oscillation at any given point takes 20 or 30 minutes to complete a cycle and has an amplitude of only about 1 meter, 3.3 feet. This makes tsunamis difficult to detect over deep water, where ships are unable to feel their passage. The velocity of a tsunami can be calculated by obtaining the square root of the depth of the water in meters multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity approximated to 10 meters per square second. For example, if the Pacific Ocean is considered to have a depth of 5,000 meters, the velocity of a tsunami would be the square root of square root 5,000 times 10. Topic. Square root 50,000 Approximately 224 meters per second 735 feet per second, which equates to a speed of approximately 806 kilometers per hour or about 500 miles per hour. This is the formula used for calculating the velocity of shallow water waves. Even the deep ocean is shallow in this sense because a tsunami wave is so long horizontally from crest to crest by comparison. The reason for the Japanese name, harbor wave, 
is that sometimes a village's fishermen would sail out, and encounter no unusual waves while out at sea fishing, and come back to land to find their village devastated by a huge wave. As the tsunami approaches the coast and the waters become shallow, wave shoaling compresses the wave and its speed decreases below 80 km per hour 50 miles per hour. Its wavelength diminishes to less than 20 km 12 miles and its amplitude grows enormously, in accord with Green's law. Since the wave still has the same very long period, the tsunami may take minutes to reach full height. Except for the very largest tsunamis, the approaching wave does not break, but rather appears like a fast-moving tidal bore. Open bays and coastlines adjacent to very deep water may shape the tsunami further into a step-like wave with a steep breaking front. When the tsunami's wave peak reaches the shore, the resulting temporary rise in sea level is termed run-up. Run-up is measured in meters above a reference sea level. A large tsunami may feature multiple waves arriving over a period of hours, with significant time between the wave crests. The first wave to reach the shore may not have the highest run up. About 80% of tsunamis occur in the Pacific Ocean, but they are possible wherever there are large bodies of water, including lakes. They are caused by earthquakes, landslides, volcanic explosions, glacier calvings, and belides. Topic Drawback All waves have a positive and negative peak, that is, a ridge and a trough. In the case of a propagating wave like a tsunami, either may be the first to arrive. If the first part to arrive at the shore is the ridge, a massive breaking wave or sudden flooding will be the first effect noticed on land. However, if the first part to arrive is a trough, a drawback will occur as the shoreline recedes dramatically, exposing normally submerged areas. The drawback can exceed hundreds of meters, and people unaware of the danger sometimes remain near the shore to satisfy their curiosity or to collect fish from the exposed seabed. A typical wave period for a damaging tsunami is about 12 minutes. Thus, the sea recedes in the drawback phase, with areas well below sea level exposed after 3 minutes. For the next 6 minutes, the wave trough builds into a ridge which may flood the coast, and destruction ensues. During the next six minutes, the wave changes from a ridge to a trough, and the flood waters recede in a second drawback. Victims and debris may be swept into the ocean. The process repeats with succeeding waves. Topic. Scales of intensity and magnitude As with earthquakes, several attempts have been made to set up scales of tsunami intensity or magnitude to allow comparison between different events. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Intensity scales. The first scales used routinely to measure the intensity of tsunami were the seberg ambraces scale, used in the Mediterranean Sea and the imamura Iida intensity scale, used in the Pacific Ocean. The latter scale was modified by Soloviev, who calculated the tsunami intensity I according to the formula I equals 1 2 plus log 2 h a v 
Display style mathit I equals FRAC one two plus log underscore two mathit H underscore Avenue where H A V display style mathit H underscore Avenue is the average wave height along the nearest coast. This scale, known as the Solovyev Imamura Tsunami Intensity Scale, is used in the Global Tsunami Catalogues compiled by the NGDC, NOAA, and the Novosibirsk Tsunami Laboratory as the main parameter for the size of the tsunami. In 2013, following the intensively studied tsunamis in 2004 and 2011, a new 12 point scale was proposed the Integrated Tsunami Intensity Scale, IDIS 2012, intended to match as closely as possible to the modified ESI 2007 and EMS earthquake intensity scales. Topic magnitude scales The first scale that genuinely calculated a magnitude for a tsunami, rather than an intensity at a particular location was the ML scale proposed by Murty and Loomis based on the potential energy. Difficulties in calculating the potential energy of the tsunami mean that this scale is rarely used. Abe introduced the tsunami magnitude scale MT display style math at M underscore T calculated from MT equals a log H plus B log R equals D display style math at M underscore T equals a log H plus B log R equals math at D where H is the maximum tsunami wave amplitude in M measured by a tide gauge at a distance r from the epicenter, a, b and d are constants used to make the mount scale match as closely as possible with the moment magnitude scale. <laughs> Tsunami heights Several terms are used to describe the different characteristics of tsunami in terms of their height, Amplitude, wave height, or tsunami height. Amplitude of tsunami refers to its height relative to the normal sea level. It is usually measured at sea level, and it is different from the crest to trough height, which is commonly used to measure other type of wave height. Run up height, or inundation height, the height reached by a tsunami on the ground above sea level. Maximum run up height refers to the maximum height reached by water above sea level, which is sometimes reported as the maximum height reached by a tsunami. Flow depth refers to the height of tsunami above ground, regardless of the height of the location or sea level. Maximum water level, maximum height above sea level as seen from trace or water mark. Different from maximum run-up height in the sense that they are not necessarily water marks at inundation line, limit. <laughs> Warnings and predictions Drawbacks can serve as a brief warning. People who observe drawback many survivors report an accompanying sucking sound, can survive only if they immediately run for high ground or seek the upper floors of nearby buildings. In 2004, 10 year old Tilly Smith of Surrey, England, was on Maikau Beach in Phuket, Thailand with her parents and sister, and having learned about tsunamis recently in school, told her family that a tsunami might be imminent. Her parents warned others minutes before the wave arrived, saving dozens of lives. She credited her geography teacher, Andrew Carney. In the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami drawback was not reported on the African coast or any other east-facing coasts that it reached. 
This was because the wave moved downwards on the eastern side of the fault line and upwards on the western side. The western pulse hit coastal Africa and other western areas. A tsunami cannot be precisely predicted, even if the magnitude and location of an earthquake is known. Geologists, oceanographers, and seismologists analyze each earthquake and based on many factors may or may not issue a tsunami warning. However, there are some warning signs of an impending tsunami, and automated systems can provide warnings immediately after an earthquake in time to save lives. One of the most successful systems uses bottom pressure sensors, attached to buoys, which constantly monitor the pressure of the overlying water column. Regions with a high tsunami risk typically use tsunami warning systems to warn the population before the wave reaches land. On the west coast of the United States, which is prone to Pacific Ocean tsunami, warning signs indicate evacuation routes. In Japan, the community is well educated about earthquakes and tsunamis, and along the Japanese shorelines the tsunami warning signs are reminders of the natural hazards together with a network of warning sirens, typically at the top of the cliff of surroundings hills. The Pacific Tsunami Warning System is based in Honolulu, Hawaii. It monitors Pacific Ocean seismic activity. A sufficiently large earthquake magnitude and other information triggers a tsunami warning. While the subduction zones around the Pacific are seismically active, not all earthquakes generate a tsunami. Computers assist in analyzing the tsunami risk of every earthquake that occurs in the Pacific Ocean and the adjoining land masses. As a direct result of the Indian Ocean tsunami, a reappraisal of the tsunami threat for all coastal areas is being undertaken by national governments and the United Nations Disaster Mitigation Committee. A tsunami warning system is being installed in the Indian Ocean. Computer models can predict tsunami arrival, usually within minutes of the arrival time. Bottom pressure sensors can relay information in real time. Based on these pressure readings and other seismic information and the seafloor's shape, bathymetry and coastal topography, the models estimate the amplitude and surge height of the approaching tsunami. All Pacific Rim countries collaborate in the tsunami warning system and most regularly practice evacuation and other procedures. In Japan, such preparation is mandatory for government, local authorities, emergency services and the population. Some zoologists hypothesize that some animal species have an ability to sense subsonic Rayleigh waves from an earthquake or a tsunami. If correct, monitoring their behavior could provide advance warning of earthquakes, tsunami etc. However, the evidence is controversial and is not widely accepted. There are unsubstantiated claims about the Lisbon quake that some animals escaped to higher ground, while many other animals in the same areas drowned. The phenomenon was also noted by media sources in Sri Lanka in the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake. It is possible that certain animals e.g., elephants may have heard the sounds of the tsunami as it approached the coast. The elephant's reaction was to move away from the approaching noise. By contrast, some humans went to the shore to investigate and many drowned as a result. Along the United States' west coast, in addition to sirens, warnings are sent on television and radio via the National Weather Service, using the Emergency Alert System. Forecast of tsunami attack probability 
Kunihiko Shimazaki University of Tokyo, a leading member of the Earthquake Research Committee at the Headquarters for Earthquake Research Promotion in Japan, has mentioned an idea for instituting a system of public education regarding the probability of tsunami risk. Such a system was announced by Shimazaki at the Japan National Press Club in May 2011. The forecast would include a detection for environmental risk, including proposed tsunami height, danger areas prone to tsunamis, and overall occurrence probability. The forecast would integrate the scientific knowledge of recent interdisciplinarity with information gathered from the aftermath of the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. Per the announcement, a plan was due to be put in place by 2014, however, reliable forecasting of earthquake and tsunami probability is still unavailable. Shimazaki acknowledged that, given the current literature on the topic, tsunami probability warnings are just as, if not more, difficult to predict than earthquake risk probability. Topic. Mitigation In some tsunami-prone countries, earthquake engineering measures have been taken to reduce the damage caused onshore. Japan, where tsunami science and response measures first began following a disaster in 1896, has produced ever more elaborate countermeasures and response plans. The country has built many tsunami walls of up to 12 meters 39 feet high to protect populated coastal areas. Other localities have built floodgates of up to 15.5 meters 51 feet high and channels to redirect the water from an incoming tsunami. However, their effectiveness has been questioned, as tsunami often overtop the barriers. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster was directly triggered by the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, when waves exceeded the height of the plant's sea wall. Iwate Prefecture, which is an area at high risk from tsunami, had tsunami barriers walls Taro sea wall totaling 25 kilometers 16 miles long at coastal towns. The 2011 tsunami toppled more than 50% of the walls and caused catastrophic damage. The Okashiri, Hokkaido tsunami, which struck Okashiri Island of Hokkaido within 2 to 5 minutes of the earthquake on July 12, 1993, created waves as much as 30 meters (100 feet tall), as high as a 10-story building. The port town of Aone was completely surrounded by a tsunami wall, but the waves washed right over the wall and destroyed all the wood-framed structures in the area. The wall may have succeeded in slowing down and moderating the height of the tsunami, but it did not prevent major destruction and loss of life. Topic: See also equals equals footnotes